Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1980 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today we have a special edition. It's going to be the 1980 All-Star Game. In real life, the 1980 All-Star Game was held at Dodger Stadium. Uh, Ken Griffey Sr. was the MVP. And the managers were, was, uh, were uh, Chuck Tanner from the Pittsburgh Pirates and Earl Weaver of the Baltimore Orioles. They were the uh, two teams who uh, won the, uh, played in the World Series the previous year. And so uh, today we're going to be um, having our All-Star Game. I've actually never played the All-Star Game. I'm assuming that all I need to do is click on this and it will come up and we'll take a look and hopefully I can actually play. Um, I usually would just advance past all of this when I'm actually in the middle of the season and I'll just go to the next game in the series. But we're going to click on this now and we're going to give it a shot. And uh, I think this will be a fun presentation. So I'm clicking on it. Play this game in play by play mode. Yes, that's what we want to do. And the 1980 All Star game is being hosted by the Dodgers. Okay, which team would you like to control? I would like to control the American League. Now, in real life, the uh, Detroit Tiger representatives were Lance Parrish and Alan Trammell. I have no idea which Tiger will be represented here. Um, so here's the rosters. So for the American League, we have Jim Palmer, who's well-deserved of the start. He leads the uh, league in wins. He's 13-7. and seven. There you go. He just beat us in the last game, in fact, uh, before the All-Star break. Uh, and he's probably the class of the field. It, he did pitch a complete game against us, and uh, I think he held us to four hits. Um, and so he's a, re he's a representative of Baltimore. Jerry Kuzman is probably the only twin here. He's 11-6 and six with a 3.15 ERA. Pretty good for his age 37 season. In addition, we have Ron Guidry, Louisiana Lightning. He's 10-6 uh, and six with with a 3.03 ERA um, and sitting at 97 strikeouts halfway through the season. And then mop up. Well, that's a weird way of putting it. We have a uh, rich Wortham of the Chicago White Sox. He's 11 and six. We haven't faced the uh, Sox yet this year, um, but uh, he looks like a pretty decent r reliever for this game. And then there we go, Detroit Tiger, mop-up duty, Jack Morris, 9-6 um, with a 4.19 ERA. Uh, he's definitely our best starter. I'm not sure he deserved to be in the All-Star game, but we'll, we'll take it. And then we're looking at uh, Rick Langford of the A's. He was 10-6 with a 3.40 ERA. Floyd Bannister of the Mariners. So keep in mind, uh, this is only the third year of the, Manis of the Mariners' existence. So uh, he's ten and five with a one. Uh, I'm sorry, with a three point four one ERA. And then we have George Medic, Doc Medic. This guy uh, just beat us and uh, had a complete game against us. Nine and seven, three point three nine ERA. Jesse Jefferson of the Blue Jays, eight and six, three point eight zero ERA. More walks than strikeouts, but a low opponent's batting average. So he's probably the sole uh, Toronto representative. And then we have some relievers here. We have uh, Goose Gossage of the Yankees. 4-2, uh, 2.91 2 ERA. Uh, 19 out of 24 for saves. Skip Lockwood of the Red Sox. Uh, he's... Got a 1.82 ERA in relief, uh, two saves, so he must be a middle reliever or a setup man for the uh, Red Sox. And finally on the roster uh, for pitchers is Bruce Keeson of the California Angels. Fantastic mustache. Uh, 11 and 2. Wow. 2.61 ERA. More walks than strikeouts. Um, but wow, he he should he probably should be the starter. Um, but I'm going to go with what the uh, league, uh, what the game suggested with Jim Palmer. Uh, it'd be fun to control him instead of having him crush us. 
Let's look at the lineup. Here's the lineup for today's game. Now we're going to leave this as the lineup. And since we're in the National League, it uh, looks like Palmer's going to bat. So batting leadoff for the American League is going to be Daryl Porter, catcher. Uh, he's batting 278 overall with 17 home runs. Batting second will be uh, George Brett of the Royales with cheese. And uh, 10 home runs, batting 314. Hall of Famer Paul Molitor in his third year with the Brew Crew. And he has 11 homers, 15 stolen bases, also batting 314. And then we have Willie Mays Akins. Mays is his middle name. And uh, he's got 13 home runs, batting 318. And then we have Red Jay. Mr. October, he's come on strong. If you remember in the early uh, games of the season against Detroit, he only had two or three home runs for a long time. And now he's got 13, and he's batting 288 overall. And a shocking 12 stolen bases. And then we have Dewey Evans. He's actually on the Royals. He got traded uh, earlier this season, as you can see. He's got 16 home runs. He's batting 353 for the uh, Royals since the trade. That's amazing. And then we have uh, the human rain delay, Mike Hargrove of the Indians. He's a left fielder. And uh, he's batting, he's, what has he got here? He's got nine home runs, batting 322. 414 on base percentage. He does walk a lot. That's why he's called the human rain delay. And uh, Robin Yount, Hall of Famer. And he's got uh, 14 home runs, a career high at this point, batting 336. And we already covered Palmer, so we'll, let's look at the backups. We have Bobby Gritch of the Angels. Um, 11 home runs, batting 301. We have Reggie Smith of the California Angels. Having a pretty good season himself. 16 home runs, batting 323. We have Yaz, in age 40, with 15 homers, batting 307. And then we have Glenn Borgman of the Orioles, who bats leadoff for them, and he has totally crushed us all year, as all the Orioles really have. He's got eight home runs, batting 294. We have Dave Rader, also a catcher. This guy took over for Carlton Fisk after Fisk was traded to Detroit, and all he's done is raked. He's got uh, only 189 at bats, six homers, batting 328. And he's been unstoppable against us. And finally, Alan Trammell. Nice. We're gonna definitely going to work him into the game at some point after uh, Robin Yount. Um, doing pretty well. Nine home runs. Career high for him. And uh, eight stolen bases, betting 279. And uh, he's been betting in the number two and number nine spot all year. So uh, good job by him. And we'll go over the National League uh, when the time comes. So... It looks like uh, Nolan Ryan is going to be uh, starting against us. And so, can we pull up the season stats? We can do that. I've never done this before, folks. So, follow, you know, be patient here. So, we are in Dodger Stadium. That looks great. And uh, everyone looks good defensively. So, we will go over the National League lineup uh, momentarily. So, Nolan Ryan's on the mound. Let's show him real quick. 12 and 5, 2.25 ERA. Eight complete games, three shutouts. He's got 146 Ks in 159 innings. So I guess that's probably even below average for um, for Nolan Ryan. So let's get this game started. Um, as uh, as always, you'll see the um, 1980 baseball card to represent the player on this side. And uh, here's Daryl Porter. So Porter leads off the game. He goes down on strikes. Not, not a surprise coming from Nolan Ryan. So that's one out. Here's George Brett. Brett's going to get a base hit to left field. And do I want to stretch it for a double? I'm going to say no. I mean, Warren Cromartie has a 75 arm in this game. But he was electric in the outfield. You do not run on Warren Cromartie. So, runner at first base, and here's uh, Paul Molitor. He's got a 97 contact, so I'm going to hit run. 
we're going to try to get things moving here on uh, Ryan. And Molitor is going to ground it to second. Brett uh, is safe at second base. And uh, we have one, uh, two down with Willie Mays Akins. And Akins is going to ground it right back to Ryan. And we're out of the inning. <laughs> oh, wow. Jim Palmer is already listed as tired. Well, we only need him to go maybe two innings, right? So let's take a look at the National League. Um, I don't know if we'll be able to see their full roster, which is a bummer. Uh, but we have uh, Gary Weiss, who it's a rookie batting leadoff. He is a Dodger. Um, I don't know who this guy is. But he's got, he doesn't have a home run. He has 28 stolen bases at the halfway point, batting 298 overall. Batting second and in center field is Gene Richards, also another speedster. Uh, no home runs, 32 doubles at the halfway point, and 44 stolen bases, batting 334. So you can see what the National League game is. It's all speed. But we're looking at Dave Parker, who's got some pop. Probably deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Hopefully he gets some recognition. Uh, it didn't help him much that he was involved in the cocaine trials um, in the late 80s, early 90s. So uh, He has 12 home runs, batting 311. Batting cleanup is Pops, Willie Stargell. He's age 40, just like uh, Carl Yastrzemski. He's got nine home runs, batting 320 at age 40. That's impressive. At third base is Mike Cubbage. Cubbage got traded over uh, from the Twins early in the season. 13 home runs, 287 batting average. And here's Warren Cromartie. Uh, 11 home runs, batting 360. Uh, he also had some serious drug issues, uh, which derailed his uh, career. But a um, fantastic player in his time, and definitely underrated. And then there's Butch Weiniger. He was traded over midseason to the home team, the Dodgers here. And uh, he's, wow, not great. Is it, maybe he's the best they have to offer in the National League. I'm not sure. Maybe we'll see a replacement. But um, not all that impressive. But someone's got to do it, right? And finally, at second base, is Keith Drumright. Uh, I remember him on the A's. I do not remember him on any other team. But in this game, he's on the Cubs. And he is dynamite. No home runs. 10 stolen bases, batting 353. Okay, and we've already covered all the, the um, American League pitchers, so we can just get right at it. So betting leadoff is this unknown named Gary Weiss. Rookie All-Star. And Palmer plunks him in the side in the middle of the All-Star game. I, I mean, we have to kind of keep an eye on Palmer then. Uh, I hate to see him get injured because we're pushing him while he's tired. So runner at first, a guy with a lot of speed. Gene Richards at the plate, and there's a stolen base. As Richards almost got hit also. So as predicted, as a stolen base, look at my look at the outfield uh, defense for my team. Terrible, terrible defensively, below average anyway. So Palmer gets Gene Richards to ground back to for uh, the pitcher, and Weiss holds at second base. So there's one down. Here's Dave Parker, and wow, Weiss tries to steal third, is thrown out by. Uh, Daryl Porter, and so it's two down. Everybody's aggressive today. So two down, Dave Parker still up to plate, and he strikes out swinging. So uh, we head to the top of the second. Reggie Jackson versus Nolan Ryan. Power versus power. And Ryan wins as he strikes out uh, Reggie on a high inside pitch. So that brings up Dwight Evans. I like the uh, American League uh, All-Star Game uniforms as uh, Evans pops out to short. So two down for the only uh, Cleveland representative, Mike Hargrove. And Hargrove pops it up, and the second baseman has it. So we're going to be going through the second inning here, and then I'm going to start making some quick changes. But we're going to let Palmer pitch one more inning since he's deserving. Here's... Uh, Willie Stargell. And Stargell's going to pop it up into foul ground on the right side. And that's going to be one out. 
So one down for Mike Cubbage. Surprise all-star, if I have to say so myself. As he strikes out. So two Ks for Palmer. Here's Warren Cromartie. And Cromartie's going to fly out to right field. So a 1-2-3 inning for Palmer. And uh, we'll definitely pinch hit for him. Here's Robin Yount. His first at bat here in the top of the third. And Yount's going to pop it up on the infield. It's going to be caught by the shortstop, and that is one down. So Palmer is done. We're going to bring in Yaz. We don't want him playing the field. He would be a DH, uh, most likely. And he's a lefty, so we're going to bring in Yaz to face Nolan Ryan. One down for Yaz, and he walks. So good job by uh, Yastrzemski. And here is, uh, back to the top of the lineup, is Daryl Porter. We're going to let him swing away. He walks. So runners at first and second, a couple slow guys. And here is uh, George Brett with one down here in the top of the third. He's going to pull it to the first base side. And uh, they only get the runner at second. So we have first and third, two down. Nolan Ryan is listed as tired. I, I'm not sure if there's a pitch count in the All-Star game. I haven't seen that before. But only 44 pitches, technically. And Molitor is going to rip it on a line to right field. And it's going to be caught. It looks like a hit off the wall, but um, it will be caught. And we're going to take Yaz out. We're going to replace him with who I think is surprisingly impressive. I'm going to put bring in uh, Bruce Keeson. Why not? He deserves it. 2.61, 11 and 2. And uh, he plays for the Angels. Why, why are you not letting me? Oh, why, why can I not put him in? Um, hmm. I don't, I'm not sure why, I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, okay, let's try Ron Guidry. Yes, I guess we do. All right, so I, I'm not sure why they won't let us do that, but, um, uh, hmm. okay, well, let's bring in, um, shoot. Let's bring in Rick Langford. Okay. I don't know why they won't let us use Bruce Keeson, but maybe we'll try him later on. So that's the first time I've seen that. Uh, okay, so Rick Langford's in there. Here's Butch Weiniger leading off the bottom of the third. And <laughs> Weiniger gets hit by Langford. So Palmer hits a batter and Langford hits a batter. So uh, runner at first base for Keith Drumright. Drumright hits it back to Langford. And they get the runner at second. And uh, Drumright remains at first. They're going to bring in a pinch hitter. And it's going to be uh, Kent Landro, who is on the Dodgers. He was traded over from Minnesota. And uh, combined eight home runs with 21 stolen bases. Um, not sure what that batting average comes out to. I guess it's over here, right? 314 overall. So one down for Kenny Landro. And another attempted steal, this one by Drumright, and he's caught stealing. So good job by Porter. He's got two out of three uh, so far in stealing. So two down for Kenny Landro. And Landro rips it to left field. It gets down and gets to the wall. Landro is going to be safe at second. And so runner in scoring position as they head back to the top of the lineup with Gary Weiss. And Weiss strikes out swinging. Steve Carlton, lefty, comes into the game. Here's Steve, Steve Carlton's numbers. He's 12 and 3, 2.23 ERA. Opponent's batting average of 186. Nine complete games and three shutouts already. So, um, uh, who's on our bench? I'm sorry, I just want to check. We have a second baseman, a right fielder, and a couple catchers, and Tram. Okay. So, we're going to let uh, Willie Mays Akins swing away, even though he's a lefty. He's going to ground it to sh second base. And the second baseman commits an error. That's a, on drum right, so he gets caught stealing. 
and subsequently commits an error in the next inning. So, runner at first. Here's Reggie. Carlton versus Reggie Jackson. And he strikes out on an inside pitch. So, one down for Dewey Evans. He's a righty. And Evans is going to pop it up to drum right at second. And that's two down. So two down for Mike Hargrove. Aiken still at first base. And Hargrove gets a base hit to center field. Aiken stops at second. And that's only the second hit for the American League. So we head uh, to the number eight hitter, Robin Yount. Pitcher's up next. And Yount sends it deep to center field. But it's going to be caught by the center fielder, uh, Gene Richards, who is leading off the bottom of the fourth. Um, and they, we have a bunch of lefties, so Re Langford pitched his one inning. Now we're going to bring in Guidry. Actually, can I bring in Keeson now? No. All right. So we're going to bring in Louisiana Lightning. Yes. Oh, he's t listed as tired. Well, we're going to let him pitch an inning. So Gene Richards leads off. And Richards will pop it to left field. Hargrove's got a bead on it, and that's one down. Dave Parker to the plate with one out. He's going to ground it to third. And Brett throws him out for the second out. Here's Pop Stargell uh, of the world champion Pittsburgh Pirates. And he strikes out swinging. So we head to the top of the fifth. And, of course, we're going to pinch hit for Guidry. Good job by the, him, considering he was tired. I think I need to put Glenn Borgman in there. Uh, Glenn Borgman, he's been crushing us. And uh, deserves an opportunity to hit today. Maybe I'll move him into the catcher spot. So Borgman... Strikes out looking. Thanks for nothing, Borgman. And then he will be followed by the other catcher on the, on the team, Daryl Porter. This will be his third and final at bat. He pulls it to first baseman, uh, Willie Stargell, and that's going to be the second out. So two down for George Brett. And he strikes out. So great job by Steve Carlton. And uh, we're going to use Borgman on defense. We're going to move him to the catcher spot. And we're going to leave everyone the same. And we're going to bring in another pitcher. And we're going to bring in Rich Wortham of the White Sox. Why not? He's a lefty. Probably the best the Sox had to offer so far this year. And he's going to face Mike Cubbage, leading off the bottom of the fifth. Cubbage grounds it to second base, and that's one down. That's going to bring up Warren Cromartie. And Cromartie takes an inside pitch, hits it into the gap in right center field, and lands at third base with a triple. So we're going to pull the infield in. It's something I customarily do in a tight game. And Butch Weiniger has a chance to drive in the first game's run. First run of the game is what I mean. You know what I mean. And Weiniger pops it into a short right center field. It's two down. It's not deep enough to get the run in. Even with uh, someone with Cromartie's speed. So two down for Keith Drumright. He's been kind of the goat of the game so far. Oh, and he walks. Uh, he, yeah, he walks, and uh, now they're going to bring in a pinch hitter, Roy Smalley. We'll take a look at his stats. He was also traded from Minnesota. <laughs> Minnesota has made a lot of deals, and I, I could never tell if they were trying to win or they're trying to uh, get rid of payroll. But, uh, yeah, Roy Smalley, I didn't see what team he's on. He's on Reds. So we have a Reds representative in there. 
So two down, we're going to let uh, Wortham pitch this small. He was a switch hitter. He's batting righty. And he strikes out looking. And what do you know, the National League's going to bring in J.R. Richard. 11-6, 2.31 ERA. 181 on base percentage. Sad story for J.R. Richards. He was actually living under a bridge, homeless at one point, uh, due to his um, substance abuse. And uh, so we're coming around to the second time through the lineup, and I'm going to bring in Bobby Gritch for Paul Molitor. So Bobby Gritch will face J.R. Richard. And Gritch pops it up to second base. That's the first out. So one down. Here's Willie Mays, Aikens. Aikens is going to pop it to foul ground on the third base side. And that's the second out. And here's Reggie Jackson with two down. And he strikes out for the third time in this game. So out comes Wortham, and uh, can we, I guess we're going to go with Jerry Kuzman if you let me. Yes, they will. All right. So Kuz is in there. He's on the Minnesota Twins. He's going to face uh, Gary Weiss to lead off the bottom of the sixth. And Weiss gets a base hit to center field. So he was thrown out stealing. He stole second base, thrown out at third in the first inning. Nobody out. Here's uh, Gene Richards. No score in this game so far. Maybe what you would expect. I don't know. Gene Richard Richards flies out to right center field, and Weiss takes a risk and... Uh, advances to second base. You don't see that very often. So runner at second. Here's Dave Parker. This is lefty on lefty. And Parker's going to pull it to the second baseman, Bobby Gritch, and he's going to be out at first. Weiss advances to third base. So opportunity here for the uh, National League to take the lead with Willie Stargell on the mound. On the, on the at the plate, and uh, Kuzman strikes out uh, Willie to and the bottom of the sixth. So we head to the top of the seventh. Dwight Evans is going to lead off the inning against uh, J.R. Richard, and he strikes out. So one down, only five hits so far this game. Mike Hargrove has one of them. And Hargrove is going to send a lazy fly ball to right field. And that's two down. And now we're going to bring in our boy, Alan Trammell. Two down for Tram. And Trammell's going to ground it to third. And that's the third out. So we head to the bottom of the seventh inning. Kuzman pitched his one inning. Here's uh, Floyd Bannister. We're going to bring him in to face the lefties. And then we only have lefties left in the bullpen. So Mike Cubbage is the first batter that Bannister will face. And he's going to get a base hit over the bag at second. And they have a runner at first. That's the fourth hit for the National League. Warren Cromartie to the plate with no outs. This is a double play. No. Now they get the runner at second. One down for Butch Weiniger. He's betting 333 versus lefty, so maybe that's why he's in this game. Only 246 overall. Clearly the worst uh, hitter on the National League team. And he's going to make me eat those words by hitting a home run into left center field. And that's a two-run shot. And the National League takes the lead. So 2-0. Keith Drumright.
to the plate. He's going to strike out looking. And they're going to bring in Johnny Ray to pitch hit. He's a rookie in 1980. No home runs like most of the people in the National League uh, team. Eight stolen bases, betting uh, 299. So two down for Johnny Ray. And Ray's going to pop it up to the uh, third baseman. And that's going to be the end of the inning. So the National League is going to bring in Ed Whitson. And Whitson is 8-5 for the Giants. 3.81 ERA, 275 opponents batting average. And he's got one uh, complete game shutout. So uh, Glenn Borgman will lead off the inning, as he does for the Orioles. And Borgman's going to ground out to short. That's one down. So here's Bannister. We're going to take him out and bring in Dave Rader. That's only going to leave Reggie Smith on the bench. So uh, Dave Rader with one out against Ed Whitson. And Rader grounds it to short. That's two down. So here's the fourth at bat of the game for George Brett. And Brett grounds it to second and another one, two, three inning. So we're going to replace uh, Dave Rader with a pitcher. All we've got left is righties. It's the eighth inning. I think we need to bring in Goose. So here's Goose Gossage. This might be the only, uh, this might be the last, you know, pitcher to make it into the game. So we're going to let Goose uh, get in there here in the eighth. He's going to face Gary Weiss, who's been a thorn in the side all game. He flies out to center field. It's one down. So one out for Gene Richards. Richards hits the left field. That's a base hit. Runner on first. Great speed. And Dave Parker comes to the plate. Parker strikes out swinging. It's two down. And here's Willie Stargell. Stargell walks. So runners at first and second, two down. Mike Cubbage. Cubbage grounds it back to Goose. And that's the third out of the inning. So we're down to the final three outs of this All-Star game. Reggie Smith is the only person left, and I, I will probably pinch hit him for Reggie Jackson, unless we get a runner on base, because J Jackson's definitely capable of hitting a two-run jack. So Bobby Grich grounds it to third, and that's, oh, an error on the third baseman, Mike Cubbage. So there's our base runner, guys. Okay, so Ed Whitson, they're keeping him in the game. Uh, runner first, I'm going to have to let... He can swing away. It's either going to be a double play with his slow speed, or uh, let's hope a home run. Boom! No, it's going to be a high fly ball to right field. And that's one out. Man, I need to um, I need to let Reggie hit. Uh, so yeah, Reggie's got to hit. So one out. Gritch is at first base. Chance here. And he strikes out for the Golden Sombrero. Four strikeouts. And we're down to our last out, so we're going to bring in Reggie Smith um, for a courtesy at bat, I guess. Everyone gets in the game. Everyone gets a trophy. And two down. This is it, guys. Unless Reggie sends it to deep center field. Nope. It's not that far. It's 287 feet. And the National League beats the American League two to nothing. It's really only the second time I've, I've been blanked all year. Um, that was a lot of fun. Um, because the date was advanced, we're gonna look at the transactions real quick, and it'll show all of the All Star um, information, including the voting. Uh, was there anything we didn't see before? No. Okay. So here's all the All Star. You can pause it. I'm gonna scroll through it quickly. You can see how the voting works. I do wish this game had the opportunity for us to vote uh, as players of the game, um, but 
That is not an option. I'd like to see that come through. Ted Simmons did not get into the game. He was listed as a starter. Maybe he's injured. I don't know. Uh, who didn't? Who else did we not see? We did not see the knuckleballer. Phil Necro, we did not see Tom Seaver. We did not see Craig Swan or John Stearns. Or Michael Jack Schmidt did not get in the game. Tug McGraw, Jesse Orozco, Bruce Souter, and Steve Howe did not get into the game. And then after the game was over, there was a trade. For the second time this year, Alan Bannister has been traded. Uh, so he's played for Cleveland, Atlanta, and now he's a Phillies second baseman. And in return, Juan Samuel goes to the Braves. He's a rookie. I mean, uh, he's an A-ball, I should say. And let's go ahead and pull up the box score. We'll get out of here. Tomorrow, um, the next video you'll see will be a, a legal leaders video. And those, I mean, the one I did before was went pretty long, so uh, it might be a little bit longer. I'll try to keep it as, as concise as possible. Uh, but I appreciate everyone following along. I hope you enjoyed the game. It's the first time I've ever done that, so um, that was fun for me. I tried to work in as many different players as I could, as you can see in the box scores here. Um, like and subscribe if you enjoy this content. If this, this is your first time watching, this is the kind of stuff we do. I also have uh, sports card breaks. I have two contests coming up for that. Um, and you can follow along uh, at Brainiac Baseball Card Breaks. And that's all here from Dodger Stadium. Uh, I'm, no, I'm no Vin Scully, but I appreciate everyone following along. And uh, have a good night.